My name is Johan Esselund. I'm the founder and CEO of Biohacks International. Biohacks International is basically providing an ID platform all on a ultra secure blockchain platform combined with an embedded microchip. We're providing the strongest and coolest identity platform to date. I've just always been really fascinated by technological integration in the body and kind of the just the symbiosis between technology and humans. And I mean, we've been we've been doing it since since the 60s. I mean, the pacemaker kind of gets you up to status quo if you're broken. Moving on from not broken to just a little bit more effective. Use tech instead of building everything on the outside. Just you know, tweak it a bit. And make yourself, improve yourself. My first client was one of my best friends, Magnus. He's a senior solution architect at Red Hat. The first thing we did was uh, he wrote and passed a text to his chip, and I put a call trigger on mine. So whenever I put my phone on my arm, it would call my wife, sort of a crowd pleaser. <laughs> The entire vision of sovereign identity and putting this on, on blockchain, protecting uh, data, and just, it, it wasn't there. It was more of a novelty kind of project, thinking this is, this is going to be awesome. As I see it, the chip that I implanted today, this is just an extremely convenient way to get access to your wallets. To have, a, have an implant in, in, in your hand or where you want to place it is just the smoothest way to avoid having cards or using your phone or, or etc. RFID or radio frequency identification has a standard uh, that's called NFC, so near field communication. Near field communication is when you kind of tap a card. Some countries in Europe are ahead of others, but the infrastructure is already there. So bus, transportation, we, we already have NFC chips in all the passports and all the IDs. We're moving towards uh, NFC and driver's licenses. The most common fears of the technology would be it, it's a tracking device or it's a, it's a control device. I mean, I, I'd say it's the direct opposite. This is the one thing that can get you in complete control of your digital identity. And you can manage the entire preference to, to anything you like. The reason it cannot track you is because it's passive, so it never emits anything until you choose to use it in very, very, very close proximity to a working device. The system needs to know that you've chosen to have this token represent you instead of a plastic card or a key fob or a key or whatever. We're not going to know anything about the data because we don't govern the blockchain, we don't decide, we, we can't control it. All we're ever going to know is the amount of data that's circulating so you can put the right resources in the right place. If you start to chip people like you do with, with uh, your pets, of course, it, it could be intrusive. But again, I'm doing, doing this on a voluntary basis. It, it's, uh, I share the information that I want to share. I can say that this technology can be used in a variety of different uh, applications, but right now, the most likely thing is just use it to open the, the office. If you travel with the, the state-owned uh, railway, you can have your priority card with you in, in your hands. You just uh, use your chip instead. In Sweden, it's getting more commonplace, but st there's still the, over oh, my dead body, big brother, uh, I would never let my employer chip me. It's not the employer chipping you, it's you telling the employer to get up to speed and integrate this. Discussing the uh, RSA 252 encryptation layers, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't mean anything to people. But showing that you can do something with a, with a chip in your hand, that really wows people. So I think that is one of the good things, with it, being an ambassador, so to speak. We could sign up 50 people basically in a couple of weeks and have them ready in January to start going wild. If we just put a couple of hundred grand behind a marketing campaign, we'd have 100,000 users within a year. But the thing is right now, there's no regulation protecting the user. So I think it's up to us to kind of make it robust and safe for, for everyone before letting it become huge. I mean, I'm using 
almost 20 years of professional body piercing, you know, the insights from that industry to make this as foolproof as possible. In 20 years, it's gonna be de facto, it's gonna be standard. There's gonna be talk, not if you get it by a chip, rather what type of chip you're getting, like different styles of clothing, rather than do you have a chip? What chip do you have? So next design, it's gonna be as small and just way more effective and secure and cooler and connected to crypto and fiat payment and EID. That's gonna be awesome. You can feel that you have some, something is not what it used to be, but then in, in, a, in a day I won't feel anything. So it's just, it's just pure fun.